Hi everyone, welcome back to the world of BIM. We have yet another video on the Autodesk Construction Cloud today. And don't worry, we will not be talking the core advanced about what the Construction Cloud is. We'll start with what the basics look like. How do you get started with the project? Um, what can you do? What are certain features? How can you manage permissions, members, everything like that? We'll start from the absolute basics. So without further ado, I will just jump right into the platform itself and then we'll discuss further as to what we can use it for. All right, so this is what the landing page for the construction cloud looks like. And you can see all of the projects information which I have fed in into this particular area already. I can visualize that here. All of my projects will be stored, whichever I am a member of anything that I've created in as well. That's something that will I'll be able to access from here. And third thing that comes in are the project templates. So this is something that I can create as the name suggests templates that I can continue to use in all of the other projects that I will be working upon as well. Something to ponder upon and definitely to add in case you have repetitive projects with similar kind of formats, then yes. Now, how do we get started with creating a new project? I simply will have to go here, give the project a name, a number, and I can select which account do I want it to be a part of. Now that is typically um, the account that your organization is using in for to create the project, you will, you can select that account, select what kind of project are you working upon. So there's a list of projects that you can select from. There are templates that you can select in as well, which will only be there. So let me just select any one out of this so I can see what templates if I have created any and what kind of project am I working in. So once I put in all of that information, I will be able to click on this create project. Now for the sake of this example, I will open up one such project that I have created in with the name of stolen building. So this is what our base page for any of the construction cloud projects that I've created in will look like that is docs. This is something where all of my folder structure will reside. It is something that will act as a document management platform. That is, as you can see on the screen as well, any architecture, civil, HVAC, any kind of files that you want to save in, you can create a particular file structure for that and save them in this case over here. What we look into first is the members section here which will allow me to either add or remove members and specify their set, uh, the permission level as well in this case. So let's say I go and click on add members and I would want to add any specific member from my team. So I can simply enter in their email ID and enter them to this particular project. Now, uh, what access do I have is that I can specify what company are they from? What is their role? Let's say he's an architect and I can specify the access level to this person as well and what products will they be having access to. So once that is done, I have simply to click on send invitations. Once the person accepts the invitations or sees the invitation in their in mailbox, uh, they can directly have access to the project from there itself. And then next step that would come in, of course, would be my files. So all of these in this case, let's say I have an architecture file. I go and open up my Revit file. I have a model view in which I can visualize my project as well. So all of the models, all of the sheets that I have published within my authoring tool, that is Revit in this case, I'll be able to visualize that. How? We have a sheet option over here, sheets and views. All the 2D sheets reside in the 2D section, whichever I have published it and the 3D models, of course, as the name suggests, will be here. Now, what I can do with this model viewer, the first and foremost thing that we look into actually is the issue creation aspect. Let's say the project that you are working upon, there are certain specifications or certain changes that have come up. Uh, me being the reviewer or me, maybe me being the authority who will be passing uh, or giving a green signal to all of these sheets or the models that I'm creating in identify a few issues that need to be rectified. So these dots that you can see on the screen, these are nothing but the issues. I can simply select a type or a template in this case as well. So let's say I have a building code problem in certain area of this specific model. So I can simply select that, highlight it over here. 
at i will have a thumbnail i will i can specify the details associated with this specific issue so <laughs> sorry so i once i specify all of these details with the description i can also assign it to a specific person in my team so let's say i assign it to somebody here i can also assign watchers who will be looking at these issues that i've created in uh, other specific details regarding the same issue that i've created in and i can all what i can also do is provide a due date and a start date with this so that this is something that is building up on the accountability side of things what i can also do is i can attach certain files or images as references to this specific issue that has been created in over here once that is done in the issue section i will be able to see all of these issues that have been created or open specifically for this particular model i can also make modifications to this status that is open currently i can say um this is something that is in review and it will change color accordingly right so <coughs> sorry so this is what the issue section does for us apart from this one more thing that we could also look into are these different levels so let's say i just would want to look at level 4 in this case uh, i can do that i can categorize that on the basis of these levels that i have created and within revit now one thing to keep in mind is all of this will work once you have made these specifications within your authoring tools be it revit in this case or navis works whatever you are working with that's something that needs to be done uh we have a model browser as well in which we I, we can specify certain filter values um on the basis of levels categories disciplines anything that you might want in this case uh, at the bottom over here what we look at is say the property section if i select any one of the, them in this case it's a basic wall and i click on the properties i will be able to see all of its data that is associated with this specific element similarly if i'm selecting a window or a door it would provide me with all of the details that i have added within my authoring tool right so all of that information is something that i have access to within this model viewer itself i can also choose to create a section or view that in the form of a section um let me select any different view right so if i am creating a section so i can do that on the basis of whatever i am visualizing in this case couple of other options for navigation and uh, getting to have a walk through within this particular model which is something that i would recommend you to uh, go through as well now going back to this area again what is interesting to see is the permission settings in this case so what permission settings allow me to do is i can see which project member has what level of permission so if i am adding a particular project member to one so for example in this case i have the architecture file folders i might not want the civil or the mep um, guys to have access to this or whatever information is there within this folder so i can restrict that either on the basis of the roles or on the basis of uh, the uh, member uh, name as well so let's say if i am adding somebody over here i can specify the uh, their email id again whoever has been added into the project initially and i can specify what kind of permissions do they have do they have only viewing permissions or they can view and download files create create and download so there are a couple of different options that we can look through and specify those permissions to the people who are being added to each of these individual folders what is also interesting apart from the permission settings is say if i want to create a transmittal for this entire folder or i would want to submit this for review i can do so from here itself although that is a topic for some other day but this is something that can be done as well i can also might want to download all of the source files i can do that as well over here the other is we can see these two different folders naming standard as well as standards now this is something that will as the name suggests allow me to um, associate standards to these folders folder names so if i go to this apply naming standard all right in this case i can't let me just create a new folder standard 2 is the name that i'm giving it in this case 
and once I select this folder and I will go and apply a naming standard so I can specify, of course select what kind of naming standard am I applying so by default we have ISO 19650 that is automatically embedded within the construction cloud itself and I can apply that naming standard to this so this tick symbolizes that the naming standard has been applied what this will enable me to do is that anytime I'm uploading any file into this specific folder I will only be able to do so if they cater to or if it conforms to those naming standards that I have applied over here in which in this case is ISO 19650 I can always have the option to uh, create one of my own as well that's a possibility as well but that is the prime reason why we are uh, adding in the naming standards in this case so if I go to the naming standards here I can see I have a default one or I can create a naming standard of my own either from the ISO 19650 template from black or if I have blank or if I have a imported XLS uh, file as well. So we have something called as the holding area. What is that? That is if in case as I mentioned earlier on, if a file is not conforming to the naming standard, it goes to the holding area which will hold that file for the time being where uh, the updation needs to be done to its to sh so that it conforms to the naming standards that's uh, right uh, on the left side over here what we can look at is all of the different other things that can be done and so if I have certain specifications I would want to upload in over here if I want to submit a folder or a file for review I can do that from this section transmitters is something that I can create over here issues is something that will hold all the issues that I'd be able to see all of the issues that are open or in review or in progress for this specific project I can create a report out of all of these issues as well that I have uh, uh, marked or created so I can create a report in the report section members as we've already discussed and we'll be able to add or remove members in this case talking about the bridge uh, section in this case over here what bridge allows me to do is that I can bridge two different projects together now what does that mean so for example I have two different projects I have certain files that uh, need to be shared across to both of these projects that I have that I'm talking about bridge is the tool that will allow me to do now it has two different options that I can look into one is that I might want any changes that are occurring in the original file to be reflected in the one where I have shared it to that is scenario one which is a possibility the second scenario is say I do not want these changes to be reflected in the second location that I have added in that's something that I can do in the bridge section again so all of those categorizations can be done so yeah that's an overview regarding what uh, options or what uh, features do we have within the docs um interface right so thank you uh for your time for this video that's all we'll be coming up with all detailed categorizations for everything else that can be done not just within the docs platform but also what do we have when it comes to collaboration and coordination side of things until then have a great time ahead thank you